It does not get much bigger than this in the Halo Championship Series. Face Clan and Optic Gaming, both of them the recipients of World Championship rings, both of them the recipients of a World Championship trophy. And we're in the winner's bracket now, Andy, we get to see who is starting off the season hottest. All roads led to here, right? This is the matchup that we came for, especially here in the Optic Arena in Arlington, Texas. This is the match that the Green Wall also came for. But they're going up against the defending world champions in FaZe Clan. Here's a t look at your series layout. Starting off with a little bit of oddball live fire here. Slayer Streets game two. Stronghold's Recharge will be your game number three before we get to King of the Hill Solitude and Slayer Aquarius. And usually I say, if needed. Now, I'm not going to say that this time because I've got the feeling we're going to see these, Andy. Yeah, I was going to say, let this one go the distance, folks. As a Let's Go Optic chant erupts before the game even starts. Cannot wait to see these two teams. It feels like we've had an explosive Saturday. Amazing results. You might have just seen Wootum, the first mouse and keyboard player to play Stop 8. We saw amazing matches earlier from SSG and Quadrant. Smiles on the face of Royal 1, looking very cool and calm heading into this one. And this is going to be an absolute banger of a series. Well, there are the Optic Ultras. There they are in the front, ready to cheer their team on. The Lucid Fan Club are out as are the former ones as well. And let me tell you, even though this is the home ground here of Optic Gaming here in Arlington, it's definitely a smattering of FaZe fans in that crowd as well who will want to silence the Optic Ultras. They absolutely will. And big, tall order here for Optic. I got, got to catch Lucid a bit earlier. He was telling me, you know, it, it just feels good. The team's firing so well together. And now as we get ready to get into game number one, he said, we've shaken off the rumors. Everyone can stop talking. We can focus on what we need to do here and they go up against the defending world champions. What a statement this would be for Optic Gaming. If they were able here in this series to send Phase to the elimination bracket this early on in the event, how much would that do for the team change? How much would that do for this squad to kick off the season with a main stage win like that? With the players are ready, I'm pretty sure the crowd here in Arlington is ready as well. As we are in to game number one of our winner's semi-final, FaZe Clan versus Optic. We're starting off with the general. Let's see what Snake Mike can do all right away, ripped off. That's gonna be too dead for each side, but I tell you what, when we've seen this matchup last year, of course, there's only one player that's different on the stage across these two rosters. That's gonna be dead zone on Optic Gaming. Unsurprisingly, all eyes on him continuously throughout this weekend, and this series is no exception. Here comes Renegade. Renegade has a chance to make a play, do some damage, get out with that QT that he collected on his way forward. And it looks like even though he got some good damage down, it's gonna be Optic who are getting the better of this fight. He'll be forced to retreat back to his teammates. Early ball time here for Optic Gaming, but just a touch of it. 10 seconds or so, nothing really too huge to talk about as Renegade continues to output damage. The only problem is damage does not get converted to kills for them here as Optic holds strong. Yeah, exact same thing I was thinking. It was really good damage and really good QT usage. He's able to get a lot of damage, but as you say, not able to get the cleanups from the teammates just yet. And off the break of that, you're going to see now Frosty with this camo in hand. Needs to make a push. They're already down by 20. Trying to play off the damage here. He's also... Got a pistol to work with as well, which means he can pop, pop, pop away at those shields and capitalize on that damage and ooh, a little bit of a swing and a miss. Very nice. And there's that pistol that gets him out of trouble once again. 23 points still to Optic though, as they do finally force the play ball here phase. Ooh, a little pancake from Frosty as well. He hits the melee before he hits the repulse to get the little bit of a rare metal there. Finally will fall. That was three dead for Optic though. This should translate into a time here. Yes, it will. Snakebite's gonna start the rotate. Here comes Formal trying to stop that rotate right now. Yeah, just kind of cut through here. He might be able to cut Snakebite down. Ooh, he's not just, shooting. Just about managed to get away, but Trippy will take him down so the ball won't be collected by FaZe to keep that score ticking upwards. Optic and Formal there by doing that damage and cutting through have stopped a potential back green setup for them. Formal now off the back of it, knows where all of FaZe Ooh. are and tries to sneak a ball back into his teammates, but FaZe were ready for it. Ooh, it was too dead when he went for the grab, but look at the timing there from Snakebite off the break. Gets the nades into Rat Tunnel, which translates then instead into two dead for Optic, so it won't be too much time on the board. The two teams right now tied at 14 kills apiece. Now, this is going to be a game and a series which is decided by moments. Yeah. One sniper rifle bullet that hits, one that doesn't, one kill that got away, or one kill that gets collected. All of these will contribute to who comes out on top at the end of it. But early on here, Optic Gaming, they are doing a better job of just 
out rotating and getting that odd ball away from the face pushes. It's 33 points and rising. It's a strong start from the green wall. Yeah, it really is. Let's see what Lucy could do here. He knows the angle he needs to cut off, so he will move sandbags with the team. A lot of pressure coming in on Campbell's side. This hits the body, cleans it up immediately. Now he's looking for a second. Trippy gets taken down by Royal 2 in the meantime. And FaZe are losing members, and this should just be a case of cleaning up a couple of players. Although Lucy can't quite find where Renegade disappeared to, and that's going to cost him a kill. Look at that, yeah. You can tell just how carefully he was checking those corners in the end. Oh, my. Kill Look at the shots coming out of him, almost gets a second. That'll be a killing spree on the board. And just like that, Optic starts to pull away in the kills category, 21 to 16, and more importantly, on the scoreboard as well. They're up 55 to 4. Almost got a snipe here on Cuts as well. Nice little body shot onto Renegade. That's going to completely slow this push down. Now, so important it is to control this weapon. It's not about the flashy kill sometimes. It's about slowing down the push by doing damage. Now he's re-wrapping re towards his teammates on the pillars to provide that covering fire to keep them alive as FaZe try and continue their push. Pretty wild stats here on the side of Optic Gaming as well. Take a look at the big standout. It's Trippy. He's 11 and 6 at a time when Dead Zone and Formal have 3 and 2 kills respectively. Trippy popping off here with the numbers. And again, another body shot here from Formal just means that his ball carrier doesn't come under any pressure whatsoever. 75 points and rising now, and FaZe Clan probably starting to get a little bit concerned about the pattern of this round, because it, to be honest with you, it's been all optic, and they haven't really had to do too much for it. Ooh, formal there. Knew he wanted to play the sniper rifle, and then even almost gets the headshot as well on the fadeaway, but now Snakebite with the QT. They're down 79 to 9, and finally scoring. There's one team, though. It doesn't matter how much they're down. It's just the fact that they haven't lost the round. Enemy has the ball. Where they can formulate a comeback and get into any game type, it's going to be fades. We've seen it before. We've already seen it at ball this event. Dropped. As Frosty has Enemy the ball has in his hand. Big push on the earth. Camo side off the map at the moment from Opti, but that's oh, no, just no, no, play ball, no play ball. The play ball didn't come in. I think everyone's thinking the same thing. Frosty there. You, you couldn't tell from Snakebite's POV. Frosty not in a position Enemy. to get the play ball. And Snakebite was expecting something coming sandbags. Instead, they stuck under him, and they really pushed that three-man push to prevent the play ball. Finally, it does play, but now 84 to 20. FaZe with a lot of work to do. Only one mistake really left for FaZe here. Optic pick up two kills, and that means they're going to pick up the odd ball as well. Row two with a double kill might give them a little bit of a window to push forward, but the clock is against them, and Lucid is running away from the FaZe push. 94 points and rising. Make it 95, and he turns direction. He changes direction, runs back to his spawners, throwing that odd ball down where they can contest it. Okay, ball played at 96. I believe Snakebite also had Camo off screen. However, with FaZe 2 dead, this really should be Optic's game here. However, FaZe turn it around. It's going to be three dead for Optic. Snakebite has that camo, like you mentioned. Now there's the opportunity for him to get that first pick in the push, to get the information that he and his team require to create a little oh. bit of space. And there is that kill. Dead Zone did get one onto Renegade, though, so this isn't going to be a comfortable hold here for FaZe. Not going to be comfortable. This is really, really high stakes Halo here. They need to play absolutely perfect for what will feel like an eternity. Down by 60 points. Optic probably thinking we've got a few pushes here. Just take our time, get four players back on the map, get one kill, and then think about that odd ball. Trippy now, having seen the kill start to come in, tries to move towards that odd ball. It's a 2v2 on the map right now. Ball going to be thrown away, but is it thrown away from the Optic push far enough? Deadzo comes in, he gets two. Is he going to be able to turn it into a triple? Instead, plays his life smartly. More damage onto Frosty as the cavalry now arrives for Optic. This is desperate from FaZe Clan trying to hold the Optic push off that odd ball. Wow, two dead here for Optic. FaZe so far winning that off of the play ball from Snakebite into the dummies. It's a really good play, but still a lot of work to do, of course. Three dead, three, two e one right now. Dead's on the only player alive for Optic. Only player alive, but still alive. Most importantly, however, he will go down. Snakebite will get that ball. Well played. Or as I say it, it resets. That's how long that scrap went on. Yeah. Long enough for that odd ball to reset to bottom middle, and that's great news for Optic. Oh, dangerous. Renegade almost dies bottom, and he gets taken down. He's the first to fall. However, 3v3 on the map. Here comes Formal. Formal backing up Lucid. Lucid gets taken down as well. Gonna have to slay around this ball before they try and do anything. Snakebite's buying so much time. He's throwing a shoulder at him. And in the meantime, here comes the rest wow. of FaZe. Royal 2 falls down to get that kill onto Formal. Snakebite was taken down, but Optic lose two members. Now, can FaZe keep this up all in their hands, or is Trippy on the flank about to cut them down? And maybe win oh this boy. round is Dead Zone and Trippy. And it will be Optic who get round this corner with the up ball to close it out. Very, very good closure. You had to think that was eventually going to come with the enormous lead they had. But as you said, a lot of composure, a lot of patience coming in from Optic Gaming. Trippy gets the help he needs as he pushes in towards the pillar door. They will close out the round. And now look to do it in two rounds if they can. What a round from Trippy, by the way. Not only 
much. The game winning moment, he's 16 and 12 with 56 seconds of ball time as well. Doing it all in a big series is what he's known for. And he's trying to continue that in that first round and in this series. For now though, the pressure is going to be top middle because that's where that sniper rifle has just dropped. The QT out is going to allow Snakebite to stay alive for just a second, but Trippy sniffs him out and puts him to sleep for a few moments. Got to say, really interesting uh, comparison between the points on the board in Bob and also the kills. That was a blowout round largely in terms of score for Optic Gaming. However, the two teams right now are tied at almost exactly 50 slays apiece. Trippy going to move that ball away again and 2v2 on the map right now, so his bodyguard is going to be looted. Where are the face spawns? It's heavy on the Enemy ammo side ball. of the map. Trying to force their way forward. Trippy's oh, looking for a rotate out. They're trying to force the space over at green where their numbers are. Oh, oh, and having handed that ball off, Snake by forgot that Trippy was here and he might live to regret that one. Two dead here for FaZe. A good opening as well, once again, from Optic Gaming. 19 points already on the board. We'll see if they can continue in a blowout round, as we said. Let's get to a listen here in round number two with Optic Gaming. Watch out training, watch out training, man. Watch out, nice. You guys rats still, they're pushing big door. They're pushing big door. Try to kill this. Three pulls should be up or what? Yeah, one guy top nest. Nest, John. Nest, three shots. Back to back, back to back, absolutely. Back to back, absolutely. Back to back, absolutely. Back to back, absolutely. Just watch out training. Go back to back, absolutely. training, he's training. Just one shot. Just one shot. I'm in weak. Snake bite. Two shots on me. Two shots on me. Look at White box. White box. Yeah, I don't see him. Enemy has it. Snake bite. 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 Snake I spotted oh, actually. I spotted it. I spotted it. Screens and 2 and 8, okay? Coming screens. 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 Ball drop. That one. Two days. Tower, tower, tower. Come first. Nobody get balls. 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 Nobody get Watch out, nice. three ball for that, get some space here. Sniper, sniper, sniper. I spawned elbow, I spawned elbow. Could be nest. Could be green. I got sniper, I got sniper. Okay, okay. I'm hiding elbow right now. We're rotating this cut, so we're gonna be in the Nice, nice, two shot. Okay. Pillars, pillars. Hey, white box, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in the vent. Two shot in the vent. Nest, 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 nest. Good jump up, good jump up. Can I stop me? Three on three right Enemy halfway to victory. I'm in. Watch out, I'm in absolute. Pretty good. Pretty good. Watch out, I'm in. Watch out, I'm in. Absolute cut, tires. He's watching the tires. On OB. I'm in, watch out. Sniping cut, sniping cut. Sniping cut. See, what's tires? Watch out, man. On ball, two dummy, two dummy door. Two. Well, Optic sounding composed and calm as they always are, but to take ourselves back into the game and look at that score, Optic have the lead at the moment, but FaZe with far more, I would say, consistent setups and ball time than they had in that previous round. Certainly looking much better for FaZe and FaZe fans here as three will fall on the side of Optic Gaming. Four dead, first spawner is up, that's going to be dead zone. And now right back in this game, of course, a let's go Optic chance answers back to the score, climbing up here for FaZe, but a lot of interesting stat lines as we're just about tied here. Mark FaZe actually goes into the lead by just a few seconds. A lot of interesting stat lines to highlight. I'd say one of the most interesting is going to be Formal's assist for a lot of that listening. He had double the assists of anyone else in the game. It's what he does best, right? The human UAV. There's a nickname there for a reason. People playing off his damage. It's just constantly the player to play around. We're taking those good positions. Snakebite will get the trade back tower as Optic find themselves two dead again. But FaZe find themselves three dead. So Trippy turns his attention from kills and taking some more FaZe names to that Opal. Also worth pointing out here, a much more, a much closer game as you see five points only separating the two versus that first round, but really, really still close in total kills between the two teams. It's 71 to 68 in favor of FaZe. Frosty trying to locate where that player is. Enemy has completely lost him in his dead zone. 
who comes back to challenge. And Dead Zone, who almost, just about, gets away with it. Frosty hits the final headshot, though, with the Bandit. And now we're going to turn our attention away from the oddball towards the camo. Five seconds or so till it comes up. There's an opportunity here if they can get it for Optic to get that oddball out of the hands of face. And now, dueling chance, you might be able to hear Let's Go Face Clan and Let's Go Optic Chance just battling it out just as fierce. Three do fall for Face Clan. Renegade's your last player alive. Camo's down. Should be a clean grab opportunity. It is for Lucid as well. They will continue scoring. They're down by just about 10. Lucid looks formal straight in the eyes and says, take this off ball. I've got camo. Let me make a play here. And look how heavy this push is. Ooh, look at this. On the camo side here from FaZe, it's all eggs in one basket. But they don't know about Lucid. But Royal 2 pokes back out off the damage. Manages to get that kill. But here comes the rest of Optic Gaming. Back to back, three deads there. Renegade is your last player alive yet again here. It's four dead though. So Renegade is the last player alive on the map. Is going to get the ball. He will grab the repulse and start the ball rotate as well. FaZe went all in on that push. And the most important part of it was they got a one-for-one -one trade with Camo. Then they won their individuals and were able to break through. Renegade now has that ball in his hands and FaZe go into a lead. Plenty of time left in this round for either team to turn this around. But speaking of turning around, at the moment, Renegade's just turning left, turning right, trying to get a play ball. And that's exactly what he does by sending that oh repulse boy. to the back of the odd ball as he sends Dead Zone to sleep. Gets the end one as well. Insult to injury. Somehow stays alive. Hits a very, very pivotal play ball because based on where the score is, failing to play the the ball there really could have been the round. Stays alive, picks up another one as well. They're currently up just by 12 points. Okay, can't get the kill onto Dead Zone though. But so much pressure onto Optic Gaming and off the back of the pressure, Optic find themselves three dead. Phase still in control of this round as it stands. Lucid was the most forward player. He gets taken down right away. That will maintain the man advantage for FaZe. They're going to look for the second pick here. If they can, this might be additional ball time, maybe even the round. Enemy has the ball. Respect being shown here by FaZe, though. They want to make sure they secure a few more kills before they go for this oddball. One player alive, bottom middle. Ball. He's going to be formal, but I don't think he's going to be able to catch Royal 2 here. He should be able to rotate this one oh. towards Spawners. But the Spawners are a little bit all over the place here. FaZe don't know where to take that odd ball, and Optic might have just gone. A second chance at this round. Oh Ten my. seconds is all they needed, FaZe, but Optic oh. have the ball, and FaZe are three dead. You can tell from cuts they did not know where to take the ball. They thought about taking a nest bridge, then they instead had to bring it back to top mid. No play ball comes in, which brings us now only five points trailing for Optic. They might close out the game here. Enemy has the ball. Face need to slow down and get four players back on the map, but Optic want to keep the pressure up. They go into a lead as the Optic fans start to sing here in Arlington. One for Trippy. No one close enough. And that will be Optic Gaming taking home the first game of the series, two to zero. What a statement from the Optic Gaming side of the stage. What looked like it was guaranteed to be a phase round two win, sending us into a sudden death round three is cut short. And like you said, FaZe trying to figure out where to bring that ball from dummies into cuts. The rotate started towards Nest. They realized that was not going to work. And guess what? Once you already see Platt, you're very far away from any play ball opportunities. The ball sits there. Optic Gaming pushes in, gets their three dead. And they have a near perfect hold to close out the game in the end. They win in the total score of 200 to 131 and they get outslayed by one kill across the two routes. About as even as you can get in the slays, but not in the oddball rounds. And I think it's very interesting to go back and talk about that decisive moment, right? The spawns, it looked like the timing was just off for Royal 2. He thought that maybe there was gonna be a, a spawn over at green for his teammates. And instead, maybe the timing was off because Optic had already maybe got that kill, got to nest. And like you say, he ends up in a little bit of a pinch. And from there, no play ball opportunity whatsoever. And you just presented the ball to Optic, and they were able to hold a tower. Yeah, and to Royal 2's credit, I think a lot of people watching were thinking the same thing. He did have a teammate, right? I think it was yeah. just around bottom nest. So it looked like the safe and obvious rotated. But all of a sudden, the kills came in and I think surprised a lot of people. And also, of course, FaZe Clan included, as they looked like they were poised to send us to a final round. Here's Trippy's last push. A lot of help coming in for him, but made sure to lock out that first round. And they win that first round 100 to 41. It's, of course, a very different round number two, and FaZe looked a lot stronger, but Optic in the end clutching up on that last push. Yeah, I'll be very interested to see that exact play at the end of these replays, just to keep an eye on where those players did actually respawn on the map. If it, were, if it was a mistake, if it was unfortunate, or if it was a really good play from Optic, we'll have to see in these final moments here. This was just about where it was. The, uh, excuse me, it's a little bit later than this. This was the camo pickup from Lucid, but. Love the, yeah, love what we saw from Lucid here, just kind of like hugging and wall glitching those sandbags as well. Here's your final moments, and of course, 
didn't get to see exactly <laughs> where those spawners were pushing from. It might have been a Pillar's Green push taking out the player. Of course, could have come from Sandbags, taking out the player around Bottom Nest, which, which made the Green push no longer safe. However, in the end, Optic Gaming up to 2-0 to zero in that game. They'll take the first game and up 1-0 to zero in the score of the series. Next up, Slayer Streets. Slayer Streets. And Slayers have been the name of the game for FaZe Clan, right? I mean, we were talking about this before the tournament started. We were saying, how many times did FaZe have to rely on Slayers, either winning one of them or both of them in a series, to give them the placements and the championships that they had last year? Well, we have to find out the answer if it's going to be the same this year. If yep. there's going to be some, uh, a couple of series where they're not going to be able to win those game fives, win that game two, and two of these players on our screen are going to be the reasons that their respective squads might come out on top. Huge KDs from both of these players, especially on a Slayer to be a 1.59 and a 1.46 respectively between these two. And actually, Slaying is going to be a lot of the focus here for this series, Mark, because we, I can't tell you enough how interesting the stat line was from that game number one. I also need to add that Optic was being outslayed in round two specifically, 46 to 37 and came back, brought the game back, not only in slays, but obviously, as you saw, in points as well. So FaZe Clan is doing the hard work and getting the slaying done, which we're used to seeing from them. But interestingly, Optic so far really nailing the objective efficiency and kind of sneaking out these wins round after round. We'll see what game number two Slayer holds. Players load into the game here and an opportunity, a huge opportunity here for Optic to go up two in the series and really put FaZe Clan under pressure. But like we mentioned, FaZe are pretty damn good at Slayers. As we head over to the streets now, no Rockets anymore to play with, so you're gonna see a lot more movement. And the game not slowing down as much as that camo pr promotes movement, it promotes teams to get involved in fights and take space. We'll start off this game with Lucid, why wouldn't you? he was able to do here on this push. It's a wow. very nice early pick. Those picks do not usually come in that quickly on the Neons. And of course, just in case you're new to this HCS season, Camel could be going to be under late spawn. Comes up 30 seconds after the round starts. This aggression from Lucid, by the way. I think he's about to catch a lot of FaZe members off guard with how quickly and how aggressively he's pushed up to the tires there. FaZe kind of deal with it. Don't take too many deaths, but by doing this damage and by being such a presence, he's forcing all of FaZe to make decisions they don't really want him. Good timing, gets oh. another one as well. That's three dead. Renegade is your last player alive. We'll have to see where Camo went through all the scuffle as well. Three dead here for FaZe. Optic with a lead, a two kill advantage. There it it's is. It's gonna be Trippy who has the camo and more terrifyingly, oh boy, a Bulldog as well. Five to three off the opening. Things slow down right away, and this is what you love to see. This is what Camo brings now. Now we get the opportunity to see the play of the push coming in from Trippy. And Trippy gets the info, right? He gets the info first, doesn't want to show, and now he can play off the damage of his teammates. It should be a simple kill. Manages to get one, but takes the beat down. And Renegade somehow, maybe it was a teammate that came in, but the trade on the camo is there. One kill, the difference. We'll have to watch that back, but that yeah. might have been a team name. Certainly could have been cleaner. And that's the beauty of Camo being bottom mid there. You really get these high pressure scenarios where if you could just force a trade out from the other side, it's an enormous play. Very, very different, of course, from the Rocket dynamic. Three dead momentarily for Optic Gaming. FaZe goes in the lead by just one here at nine to eight. Formal was taken down that, as that last player as well. You saw him get the trade in that situation, but it means that all of Optic will be spawning together in and around that tower, in and around PD. Now Frosty has an opportunity to pick up a Bulldog. He can move up into a position where he can catch a couple of Optic members off guard and use that close range weapon effectively. It could be the lead getting a little wow, bit bigger, but this. here comes the double push. Formal will manage wow. to get two, but Frosty answers straight back with a double of his own. Absolutely beautiful head glitching comes in. We'll see if he can get this kill on Garbage. Oh, wow. Lucid! Lucid answers back with the perfect from the Stalker, but so much credit due there for Frosty as he just hits perfect little head glitching as well as the spikes in the Bulldog, but in the end, it's still Optic Gaming, still with Camo and leading by two. Trippy got away with that Camo, and how important was staying alive there for Lucid, by the way. Manages to not only get that kill on Frosty originally, yeah. but then repositions, does damage onto Royal 2, who was the anchor to watch that Camo for face. It's the Optic playbook. That's the second time in a row that we've seen Lucid hold down tires like that to allow for a Trippy grab. They've done it twice now. However, despite all that hard work, the game is still just within three. Two camos so far for Optic. And like you say, just a three kill advantage off the back of it, but that advantage is still an advantage. Lucid almost got baited into that push, but that's a little bit of game situation recognition, right? He goes, this is a little bit too easy. There's got to be a trap set here. Tries to go back. In the end, it's traded out because Formal has the help as well on that kill. So those two kills will be traded. Dead Zone's the second one to fall. However, it's answered back right away. 
two for two trade brings us now to 18-17, just a one kill game. I love what Optic do here, by the way. They get one kill on the tram and then they rewrap and I think the idea was kill the spawner, right? See Snakebite where he comes back on. They left PD open for a second. They were just checking to make sure that Snakebite wasn't a problem behind them. Having seen that and having cleared the map, now they can just turn their attention to everything that's in front of them. How many times have we seen that, right? The one spawner that spawns behind you, after the damage on your push, just comes in, gets a triple kill. So it's uh, Optic, excuse me, showing great awareness on where that respawner was coming in. Now the game slows down to a crawl because of the impending camo. As you see, bottom middle comes up in just 15 seconds time. And both teams know that a pick at this point would almost certainly guarantee it. Going to play this very carefully, very slowly. Formal has tires locked down, and this is usually a position you try and take to get an angle if you phase. So if anyone walks into this position, Formal should have it locked down. Frosty's going to peek a little bit here onto music. As the nades now go in. Renegade just got it. Renegade got it. And he got away as well. Not sure how he got in and out without taking too much damage, but he does get in and out. He doesn't take too much damage, and they get the pick onto Formal. Wow, let's see how they make this play. Let's get into a phase listening right now. Yeah, get info, get info. Yeah, two here, two here, just aimbotting him, one PD. In cafe spawn, cafe spawn weak. Careful the guy PD, careful the guy PD. Agent weak. Yeah, I'm getting damage on Agent. Watch out PD, watch out PD. You're just gonna be Agent. Nice, Stalker, repulse on my body. There's three Agent. Okay, okay, okay. You can push if you want. I'm back in him, I'm back in him. There's a spawner, there's a spawner, Lucid. There's a spawner, Lucid. We can back up, we can back up. We're super, we can go. Spawner. Back for any repulse. Sticky's are up, Sticky's are up. I think we're good, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. We have everything, guys. He stops right now, guys. Okay. Yo, listen, they. Do you got any repulse? Yeah, we're waiting for it. Yeah, double heaven, anybody? Yeah, they like to go tires and dead end, okay? That's their yeah. play. Yeah, they like to do like that. Yo, John, just keep. Someone keep watching my cross. What's PD? What's PD? I'm just saying, shot. I'm saying, right here, man. I'm kind of giving you up. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's yeah, you can go. You can go. Right. I'm, I'm playing deep. Yeah, tires on me. Tires on me. Yeah, there are a lot of nades. Big, 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 big. Make sure we have off a good nades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repulse yourself. Someone get this. Repulse yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for it. I break it. You have stickies. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I repulse stickies too, bro. We're, yeah. We're fucking quick challenge. Yeah, we have everything. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Alright, they're gonna have shroud. Yeah, they're gonna have shroud. And do we have shroudy, PJ? Yeah, I got shroudy. Okay, yeah, they're gonna have shroud though. Yep. We got cam on the dirt. Yo. Yo, yo, Trippy has shroud A plat. I only have a couple of bullets to suck, I don't know what says. Yo, listen, I'm, I'm hitting Megas. You, you guys can make a play whenever you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide B. You guys can literally leave me, bro. What's up, A with the BR? Came on to the guys. Came on to the Trippy, Trippy was a PD. I think we just square. I think we just leave Brad and get ready to square mid and get Camo the same way we did. Okay, okay, okay. Double slide. Wait, Cam Came on five. Came on five. You double slide or no? Shotty, shotty, shotty. They're trying to bait it. Top A, top A, top A. Top A1, top A1. PD1, PD1, PD1. Peter. Cuts, 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 cuts. On Shotty, won it. On Shotty, won it. Cuts the weak, cuts the weak. Nice, on Shotty, weak. On Shotty, weak. Alright, PJ. He's weak, he's weak, he's weak, he's weak. They have no stalker, they have no stalker. I won't bullshit. One's right here, music. Just stuck. I have camo still, guys. Yeah, they could. Okay, okay. You're, it's about to run out. It's about to run out. It's about to run out. Drive it, drive it. Yo, I'm looking at the Yeah, same thing. We can arc you guys. Watch out, watch out. Dead. We need to stop it. Fire, fire, fire. Dead it. Yo, I'm limping, I'm limping. Yo, 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 yo. Let this thing grab it, grab it, grab it. Yeah, yeah, I like that, I like that, I like that. Yo, Apple Heart is fucking right. Great conversation about FaZe and how they formulated that play all around the camo coming up. And off the back of it, Andy, it's a four kill advantage for FaZe. Man, what a treat, what a pleasure. Honestly, just world class communication coming in from FaZe Clan. Not only did you see unbelievable Five map management, remaining. power up management there, but they also now are in the lead 25 to 21 off of fantastic communication, coordination, and timing pushes. I think the speed of this game in the moment is just showing res the level of res respect that both teams have for not only each other, but the situation of the series as well. Yeah. Dead Zone showing no respect though. He flies in. Trying to speed this up a little bit, and all of a sudden Lucid finding himself under a little bit of pressure as well. There's a Shroud screen down. Royal 2 will get a trade in that situation at least. But off the back of the damage, we kind of have ourselves in the same situation. Just a few kills between the two teams, but it's FaZe who still have that lead. Yeah, Optic has done well to, uh, for a moment, bring the game closer, but now as a former will get rid of that last Stalker shot to not have to worry about it, the game comes back within three. So still neck and neck here, just past the halfway mark. Good damage coming in from Formal again. You can see why he had so many assists in that previous game. Another pancake coming in on the Optic side as well. This time it's losing onto Renegade, and Formal is starting to heat up here. 
Trippy gets another camo. That's three camos for him, and FaZe now have to worry as we have a tie game, and we have a ghost named Trippy. This is perfect. What does he do here? Game in his hands. Taking his time on the push. I love how he's just getting into position to not trade, right? FaZe are terrified. They know they don't have camo, so the rest of Optic are playing around this right now. Royal 2's last alive. Four. It's four dead. Four dead for FaZe Clan as Optic go into a two kill lead. Absolutely back and forth between these two, and that's what Camo brings to this. When you put two of the best teams up against each other here in the world going up against one another, the Camo grab will determine who's able to make the play. Now, Optic Gaming leads 35 to 32. They answer back in a big way. And now they're putting their foot on the accelerator as well. Look at this, they're trying to be aggressive. They're trying to stifle FaZe inside of Tram. They have a Bulldog. They also have that Stalker rifle as well, so weapons. Very friendly for Optic Gaming right now. They can afford to let FaZe make their play, knowing that they probably got the advantage in a couple of these fights. Unbelievable mental games on display as well. One of my favorite things from the FaZe listening was you heard exactly Optic Gaming. They love to do this, they love to go this way, they love to go dead end. Just knowing the tendencies of their opponents from not only weeks and months of scrims, but also, of course, multiple seasons up against one another. It's just a three-kill game. A three-kill game, lots of shots have been fired in the last 30 seconds or so, but no kills have been reported. Two minutes 30 left on the game clock as well, and it's very possible at this point that we're Ooh. not even gonna hit the 50 kill mark. Camo's gonna be coming up soon as well. Nobody wants to go down in this next 20 seconds or so. Trades as FaZe make a strong push on the pink side. Frosty, he's gonna find out the trip is still alive though. Lucy gets another, and all of a sudden, FaZe are falling apart here. Very, very good discipline coming in here from Trippy. Did not wrap around. He thought about it wrapping around benches. Instead, he stays alive. But and now comes in for the flank as well. Another two dead. Optic Gaming goes up 41 to 34. Camo up. They don't quite have the timing, though. However, the push Ooh. is good enough for Trippy to get yet another camo. And now the game is in Optic's hands. They might run away with this here. Three dead again. You have two spawners coming in from FaZe. Lucid what has a 17. run. Lucid 17 and 7 in a game that they lead by nine. Let's go, Optic! The Optic fans can feel it. And so can Frosty as is a killing spree for Trippy. A double kill for him as Optic now moved within three kills. I'm going two up in the series. What a late game from them. Prenades coming in on Cafe as well, but it's once again good discipline coming in from Lucid as well. They're up 47 36. The home stretch for them. On top of that, there's only 65 seconds or so on the clock. Time is on their side. Another kill goes the way of Lucid. And now it's just a case of surely oh, closing this oh, out, oh. Renegade. Will be disrespected in that battle. One shot, Royal 2, surely the last kill. As Formal will find it, Optic now with a 50 to 39 win. Find themselves one game away from sweeping Face Clan. In a game that was tied at 30. Optic wins 50 to 39 off of a lucid killing spree and a triple, excuse me, and a trippy killing spree. Both of them picking up big double kills as part of that killing spree. And when you have two players doing that in your late game, you're going to run away, run away with it. They ended up outslaying their opponents 20 to 11 over the course of the final 20 kills. And you're thinking, what was the contributing factor to Trippy's late game run? It's the camo, right? The camo, and not only that, we always talk about it's great to win the fight when the camo is up. It's even better to win the fight 10 or 15 seconds before. If you can get numbers on your side, even if it's a 4v3, it means that you can create space on the map. You can get ahead of that power up, get two guns on one player, whatever it might be, to secure not only the camo, but split spawns and numbers off reach spawn for the next few minutes or so. Optic execution was superb in that game. And it was all based once again around that new power up. It really was also formal and Dead zone together, uh, totaling 22 assists on the team. Essentially, two players is really getting half of the team's assists. Really great work from them, of course. But how about Lucid going 19 and 8? Positive 11 in a game that they win by 11. Huge performance from him. Also, talk about Lucid with the new settings. Is he going to be as effective? Is he going to be as good without so much sandbox? I think if you want one of those people's asking, uh, one of those people, excuse me, asking that question. Well, firstly, you haven't watched enough of Lucid yeah, for yeah. my liking because it was never going to be the case of a weakened player. He was oh, always has the ability to perform miracles. This was beautiful. 
This play from Trippy towards the end of the game, by the way, with the camo. This is what opened things up. Oh, the way they were able to, and what I, meant, what I meant there was the all four dead, was the way they executed was just absolutely beautiful. And then, but, well, keep in mind, it was 38-34 there off of that camo. Once again, had to be very strategic in the way that they pushed this. And you could tell just how patient they were in the late game. Like you said, Trippy ensuring there's no camo trade. Much better to pop a few extra bandit shots all around the map. And if your team can collapse, okay, that's fine. But when you're the camo player, you can create those openings and your team can decide the go or no go once they had the right damage back A, they collapsed, they made it count, they now lead 2-0 to zero in the series. One thing I love about how the camo plays on maps as well, especially in Slayer, is like, there's a fear, right? Yes. If you don't get it and you don't immediately, so even if you're all four alive and you know it's a 4v4 on the map, your attention is taken away from what everyone else is doing because you're all going, where's camo? It's like a, where's horror, camo? It's like a horror film. It's amazing. Everyone backs against the wall. No one wants, no one knows exactly where the incoming threat is, and guess what? That's why you get these amazing moments like we saw Trippy, whether he was front C, whether he was wrapping around back A. When you get the camo, you have the game in your hands. Taking a look here at Snake Fight stats so far in Strongholds. Well, he's going to have to perform to that level if FaZe want to get back into the series. More than double positive through pool play, but now we're into bracket play. We'll have to see if he can put those kind of numbers up against an Optic team who are looking extremely, extremely focused. They really are. And in both of these games, unsurprisingly, there were big, big moments where we saw Optic pull away. And I think FaZe is going to be very aware of that, of how this series has gone so far. And knowing the FaZe players, there's a lot that they're going to watch in terms of VOD review from games one and two. But most importantly for them, as well as FaZe fans, I think they need to realize a lot of series still to play, a chance to reverse sweep. They are your defending world champions, and they will not forget that. We'll have to see what they could do in game number three. Just remember what happened at the Halo World Championships as well. Never count FaZe out. If anyone can win three games in right. a row. Let's think about the last time Optic Gaming yeah. was leading 2-0 over FaZe. Yeah, unless you're an Optic fan. Don't think of that. Don't think, think, of, think of the present. Anyway, let's get into the next game. And let's see if this series is going to end here in three games or if we are going to see a fourth map. Recharge Strongholds is where the battle is going to take place. And Lucid, after 17 kills in game number two in that Slayer, well, he's earned himself a POV. Competing chance in the building, unsurprisingly, already in game number three. It's really hard to actually tell what I'm hearing behind me as everyone is into this match, whether you're rooting for FaZe or Optic. You've got big hopes here. Optic, of course, trying to close out the series in three games. FaZe trying to stay alive and extend the series. I mean, what a start this is from Optic, by the way. They get a double cap, they get camo and shock. So it's the perfect opening strategy from them. And now they have information on where respawns are coming in as well. Trade over A, not quite in time to stop that conversion which now means that Trippy's going to have to take a few extra seconds to go back to A and cap it. Two still dead here. That should buy all the time Trippy needs. He will eventually finish A and also get damage coming out of the cross. But looks like Renegade is snuck in on the bottom based on the fact that we saw that in the kill feed. He will, but we'll, excuse me, pick up the melee and also grab the shock. Trying to be aggressive as well. Look at this, trying to put pressure immediately onto C. Optic do manage to get C back. But now Renegade is a turret. Here on the top catwalk, hitting headshots, hitting body shots, and stopping the scoring from Optic. Too dead for Optic, so they do have to wait here. Lucid oh trying my God. to make something happen from the tower, not easy to do when Renegade is hitting shots like that off of the bottom A angle. That will maintain presence on the map, and now, of course, FaZe Clan goes into a lead, nearly doubling their opponent's score off of the opening. Just love the way he lines it up and then just flicks up to the head. Body shot is just not good enough for Renegade. 2v2 right now, although it becomes a 1v1. It's Lucid now as a fight with Renegade. Weaponry advantage is certainly in the hands of Renegade, and he will win that fight. But now he's got to hold off the rest of Optic Gaming, who are flooding towards him. Going through those pipe spawns, trying to get immediately back into the action. And why wouldn't they, right? They've got to force their way in here, and they do exactly that. Big win. For yeah, big win there. Four dead, as you say, from Trippy. Needed to win that 1v1, isolated in the back of Elevator, and he does just that. FaZe Clan will go to an early 50 to 16 lead. However, it's a trip cap response from Optic Gaming. I love that from Optic. The aggression they showed. I don't think there's been times where oh, oh, we've seen oh, that oh. level of aggression. But plays like that, I mean, you can do what you want off the back of it. An absolute reversal on your screen there. Two dead, maybe a three dead in a second. Looks like the reset comes in there. Looks able to pick that one up. Got the call out. The snake bite was over here on the C stairs, and we'll clean that one up as well. That means Optic Gaming will continue scoring and cross the 60 point mark. At the moment, FaZe are in a blender. They are being split across the map on their spawns. It's a co constant 2v4, and that just means wherever FaZe step into a stronghold, there's numbers and there's more guns for Optic Gaming. 
Renegade trying to sneak out here, but look at this. Lucy gets the call out once more. It's an important 1v1 to win. So they can keep control of C here. Renegade will be taken down. It's Dead Zone who gets the kill. And now Lucid looks to take on Royal 2, but Royal 2 will get the double. So 2v2 on the map for now. Kill traded out. As you say, 2v2. Now B starting to flip, though, in favor of Optic Gaming. See if they can finish B to maintain this lead. Leading right now by about 30 points. Formal's position on the map is going to allow them to do that. Very nice mid-bridge position coming in from him. The assists come in as well. And as Optic Gaming crosses the 90-point mark, let's get into a listen-in with a green wall. Look at the I'm hold I'm on the C-Jump. I'm coming, man. Weak in the hill, weak in the hill. I'm the C-Jump, weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goals, goals. Back shot, back shot, back shot, back shot, man. It's C, it's C, He's trying to push me? He's trying to push me? He's trying to push me. He's trying to push me. Go Valage, go Valage. I'm going to go around, I'm going to go around. Yeah, you're good, you're good. I'm close up. Ammo's coming in 10. It's one more on the glass, okay? Yeah, yeah. R2, R2 weak. One shot R2, dead. Bottom middle, bottom middle, bottom middle, and bottom tower. Bottom middle, bottom middle. Bottom middle is weak, John. Bottom middle is weak. Bottom tower, guys, bottom tower. You're dead. Three, three. Is our camo? Go see, go see. 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 That's a tough end. We tough end. Here you go. Good spot on C, but I hold the cross. Guys. Don't watch that tough end. See you guys. Alright, good fight, see. I'll fight. I'll get bait, man. I'll get bait. Yo, they're gonna spawn Matt, let's push that, just push that out, they're gonna spawn gold. They're gonna spawn gold. All day, all day. One just spawn, one just spawn, guys. They're gonna go gold door. They're 100% gonna go gold door. Don't even poke yet. They're gonna go gold door. Watch my glass, watch my glass. Yo, just leave me, Joey. Either, either, half wall, half wall. Okay. One's top eight, half wall, half wall. Just one shot, one shot, Joey. Gold door, two guys, two guys. Yeah, gold, they're going gold. One shot, they're going gold. We can end, we can end. It's fine. Well, Alva comes back into the game as Optic cross 200 points. FaZe have not had four alive on the map for what feels like almost a minute and a half now. It really does here. They're being outslayed 40 to 32. That was also a killing spree that you saw from Formal as they now have 203 points on the board to FaZe Clan's only 55. Less than 50 points to go for Optic before they potentially 3-0 in this series. I mean, they get control of A, they get control of B. They're scoring once more. Renegade and Royal 2 finally get a couple of kills, but look at Lucid, he wants to chase this down. He wants oh. Renegade out of that stronghold, and he clears him out comfortably. Should be able to get the reset. Faze in a position potentially to turn B over. But look, the B stop. Oh. A little bit of a wave there at Royal 2. Another kill for Lucid, it's a double for him. He's looking for a triple. Renegade trying to escape, and he'll let him go as he'll turn towards B and think about points and a game win. Wow, look at this run here from Lucid. He's 14 and 8 in this game right now, just beautifully done. Somehow he threads that plasma pistol underneath the staircase as he goes over the staircase and then takes Town Royal 2. They will maintain the advantage with one player down here from FaZe. They continue scoring at the 215 mark. Another kill, another killing spree here on the side of Optic. It's starting to get into a situation where it's desperation oh for FaZe. Lucid finds oh one. Boy. Lucid is taking oh. FaZe apart. And he's dropping the bags as well. Optic are on the precipice of sweeping FaZe. And the hometown crowd, they love to see it. He almost pulls off another clip. Look at the board, though. 240 points oh. on the board for Optic Gaming. Formal's joining in now as well with a perfect kill himself. 245 and rising. A is the only play here, surely for FaZe. Royal 2 is trying to desperate C. It is not E. No. Optic Gaming will sweep the world champions. And the roster that was built for this task shows that they have what it takes. As you say, the pickup of Dead Zone was to do one thing and one thing only. Be capable of taking down the world champions and reclaim the world championship by the end of the season. As a first meeting, as a first task, have they ever risen to the occasion? The new Optic Gaming takes down FaZe Clan in their home arena, 3-0. to zero. I don't think for Optic fans and HGS fans in general, the best thing to come out of that series is not just the result is that you don't pin an individual performance on why that was so successful. Every single member of Optic Gaming at some point in that series had a moment. It was the level of consistency, the height and the ceiling of the teamwork 
strength that Faces couldn't handle. A lot to be proud of there from Optic. And to end it this way, not just a 3-0, but a blowout. 250 to 56 game number three is a big, big confidence boost for their side. They also outslay in the end 53 to 43. Just total control of the game. And not only that as well, they send FaZe to the elimination side of the bracket as well. So FaZe now have a long, long road ahead of them. If they want their rematch a little bit later on, should it come to it? But I mean, this is the, this this group of replays is one of the best because every single time we're switching to a POV of Optic making a play, it's formal, it's lucid, it's trippy, and of course it's dead zone. Everybody played exceptional Halo. Really, really big isolated 1v1s here. Here's a little bit of a play you saw from Lucid <laughs> as he threads that plasma pistol so beautifully under the stairs as he goes up top. Not easy to always hit those angles. As you said, it was just complete slaying dominance from Optic over phase. And on top of that, they were also winning their 1v1 ISOs. And also, Lucid just reminded us all, Oops. do your squats. Do your squats, everybody. What a series that was. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves in terms of the whole weekend, of course. We've seen this script play out before. We've seen Optic Gaming take down FaZe, and there's a lot more bracket yet to play. However, in this outing, Optic Gaming undoubtedly the stronger team. I mean, it's not just a 3-0, is it, either? If you look at the scores, yeah. it's a 2-0 Oppo win. It's a 50-39, more than 10 Slayer win. And then the blowout on Stronghold's recharge really does tell the story that Optic Gaming here in Arlington are here to win a trophy. That's gonna do all from us though here in the Castle's booth. It's time for us to send it over to Blaze, who's with the new man, Denzo.